We are exploring different types of diseases that are caused by different microorganisms. And in today's lesson, we are looking at uh, fungal diseases. So the first one we're looking at is the one that is caused by ringworm. Well, it's called ringworm. Um, and even though there's a worm in the name, it's actually not caused by any type of worm. It's actually a fungal disease. So in humans over here, we can see that this is basically why it's called ringworms. It makes like this ring formation. And... In, it's, this is basically what it looks like on the human skin, but again, it's not caused by a worm itself, it's caused by a fungus. So basically what we see is this ring formation and the skin itself looks very flaky and it starts to peel off. The same thing can happen in cattle and pigs, there's two examples here. For the cow in this case, we can see excessive hair loss and you can see the bare skin on, on the, of the animal, all the hair gone on these areas that are affected by the fungus and the skin is also very dry and flaky. Same thing over here happens on pigs. It's difficult to see on this picture, but right over here, there probably wouldn't be any hair left. So we can see some hair on the rest of the body of the pig, but this usually causes hair loss. And you can see these circular patterns also on the body of the pig. Okay, so the main thing to remember here is caused by the Trichophyton varicosum fungus. You guys don't have to remember the Latin name, not at all. So it's just for interest sake. It has nothing to do with worms, as I said, and is transmitted on contact. So if one organism uh, touches another one, it can also transmit this fungus. And it can, this fungus itself can survive for years in the dry skin. Uh, then also your host is mainly most types of farm animals, like we saw there, even humans can get it, and domesticated animals like dogs and cats and so on as well, and your livestock like we saw ca um, cattle and pigs. So your main symptoms are the infection start as an area of small crusts and scales on the skin, as we saw in the pictures, the scales usually drop off and the hair falls off, bare patches around the eyes, ears, nose and neck is usually common. Um, so those are usually where we see it, especially in the um, previous picture of the cow, we saw it around the face area or around the eyes. Then mainly your treatment, uh, quaternary ammonium they mention here, so basically the ammonium can help with the, uh, with, with the um, fungus. Um, I'm wondering if I mention it here. No, it's not on the treatment list, but usually we can you can put sulfur. Uh, you mix a uh, sulfur powder, usually with something like a, a cream, a plant cream without any, um, uh, doesn't smell, I can't remember what you call it, but it doesn't smell nice generally. Um, so there's no perfume, oh, that's a word, there's no perfumes in there or anything to make it smell nice. It's just a bland cream, usually they mix it with sulfur, and that is very, very good to kill the um, the, the fungus. So usually that cream is applied obviously topically, so on top of the skin of the animal, right around the eyes or wherever the affected area is. The second thing that they mention here is a mixture of iodine and glycerin. It's basically the same thing. So instead of using iodine and glycerin, you can use the normal bland cream and the sulfur, but iodine is just as good. Then plunge dipping in sulfur solution. Okay, they mention sulfur here and isolate your animals which are infected. So you don't want it to spread any further. Ooh, wrong one. Okay, so that's basically it for the ringworm. You, you'll see it's very quickly here, in this case for the fungal diseases, not a lot of information to know. Then the next one is lumpy wool. So it's called lumpy wool because usually sheep are affected, not just them, but we see it most um, commonly in sheep. So you can see, shame, this poor sheep is very, very emaciated and uh, um, skinny. And also the wool now is falling off. So this is bad, obviously, for sheep farmers because they will they will lose income. They won't have the beautiful pelts to um cell of the sheep so the wool's fraying and falling out and so on so it's bad for the sheep then also it doesn't just affect uh, your sheep goats cattle and so on as well goats in this case you can see that the entire face it looks very very sore and these lesions are forming uh, around the nose and the ears ear, ear areas then also for your cattle we can see these kind of looks like circular patterns in this case but it's not as clear as the ringworms it's not complete circles but these lesions and sores are forming on the skin of cattle as well. So basically it's also a topical thing, so the skin gets affected. And it's called lumpy wool mainly because we most probably see it in sheep mainly. Okay, so transmission is 
it actually caused by a bacteria that resembles a fungus. That's why we classified underneath underneath fungi was technically a bacterium. And again, you guys don't have to know the genet of the Latin name. So it's mostly spread by infected animals coming into contact with other animals and usually with wet animals because this fungus loves wet and hot areas. So mainly if you have a wet animal that stays, it maybe has been raining a lot and the animal stays wet and now it's very, very hot after a rainy time and the animal is wet and hot the whole time, maybe for 24 hours and it comes in contact with um, an another animal with this fungal disease, that is, can easily take root on the new host's body. So mostly your hosts, um, they mention here fungal spores of the disease germinate on infected sheep. So when the spores spread, they sort of germinate and they can be transmitted by usually your shearing equipment and biting insects. So shearing equipment, again, if you haven't sterilized the equipment and the fungal, the fungal spores happens to be on this um, piece of equipment, it can spread. And biting insects, I mean, the fungus can sit on the legs or um, the face or the, um, can't hear to the words now, or the wings of the insects. And as they fly from one animal to the next, these spores are then transmitted to new animals or new hosts. So symptoms, as we saw there, sheep get hard lumps, usually also, also scabs or crusts on their skin, along with the fact that they will fall out. And also scabs appear on the ears, lips, face, um, shanks is the hindquarters, so the, the bottom area of the, the animal, and obviously scrotum as well for the males. So that's basically the areas that get affected mainly with scabs. And then your treatment, usually you want to isolate your infected um, animals, or there's mentioned here sheep, I meaning you don't want the um, disease to spread to other animals. Dip with zinc sulfate, so again, sulfur in generally for any fungal disease is actually very, very good. Then treat with antibiotics because this particular disease is mainly a bacterium, so that can help. Then basically penicillin injections can help. Uh, your flocks can be dipped on the outside to get rid of the fungus. And unfortunately, if there's any sheep that does not respond uh, or do not respond to any of the treatments, they must be culled. And culling is, I want to say, a euphemism for um, killing an animal. It's kind of like a mercy killing. So you need to kill them so that they're not allowed to breed any further because then they will just produce offspring. They will also not be able to um, respond to treatment so they will just be hurt in the process and it's going to be a waste of money for the farmer anyway if he breeds animals that cannot take the treatment against the fungal diseases. Okay so mainly the preventing and controlling of animal diseases we need to talk about next. So generally what can a farmer do? First thing obvious vaccinate your animals. So for, to prevent any of these we talked about the bacteria, the viral, protozoan and now the fungal diseases, vaccinations is key to prevent anything. Then also one needs to work closely with vets, your farmers. So if anything looks wrong you need to call the vet. And then also know how to diagnose any of these diseases looking at the symptoms so that the farmer can know okay he either needs to call the vet or he needs to get a certain type of medication if he happens to know what type of medication to use for a certain bacterial disease or a fungal disease and so on. Then also buy any healthy animals and they mention it from reliable breeders you don't want to again like I mentioned earlier uh, breed animals that do not respond to any medication. You want animals that are, are naturally immune to certain viruses and um, bacterial diseases. Then also apply strict hygienic measures. If you use certain equipment, especially in your milking parlors, you want to make sure that all your uh, machinery and so on are squeaky clean so that any diseases are not spread. Uh, that also sterilize your tools and instruments, basically comes down to the same ones as the previous um, bullet. Then isolate your sick animals so that the disease has not spread. Then also culling your animals that cannot be cured, unfortunately. And destroying your carcasses, skins or other materials of infected animals. Again, you want to prevent any viruses or bacteria that are inside the carcass to spread to other animals. So you have to destroy the carcass by burning it um, or burying it in the soil. The better idea would be to actually burn it because in the soil the bacteria doesn't necessarily die out. And also control your pests such as your flies and blowflies and those things that actually spread the disease. Then lastly movement of animals must also be controlled mainly through quarantine and health certification. So or I want to highlight that the words that have been 
um, boldened. Uh, that's basically your main ideas to remember. They are very important because I love asking about vaccinations, um, your hygienic measures, meaning if you're going to sterilize your equipment on a farm, and the quarantine, um, how to prevent the spreading of diseases usually through quarantine. So the bold words are very, very important. Then also the economic implications of animal diseases, meaning what does this mean for the farmer? So usually international trade can decrease in the countries mainly. So this is bad because it reduces the income for a country. So not just for one farm, but for all the farms in the country. Secondly, it impacts the food security for the country. It makes sense. If any of the animals are diseased or affected, you can't mainly sell the products that animal produces like wool or milk or meat. Then also it impacts job security meaning if there are less animals or more sick animals, people won't be able to work. Think of the zoonotic diseases. If there's an outbreak, nobody is allowed to work on the farm because they have to protect themselves. Then also the decrease in milk production uh, causes loss of incomes, meaning if mastitis occurs, there's going to be less product produced by milk cows. Then also reduce quality of products. Uh, makes sense, mastitis reduces the quality of the milk. So despite the fact that it, produce, that it produces less milk if a cow has mastitis. It also affects the quality of that milk, the little milk that it does produce. Then also wool production decreases when sheep are infected with lumpy wool. Makes sense. You can't, you don't have any wool to sell in that case for a sheep farmer. And it also costs a lot to control or prevent or treat these animals. So meaning any medication you have to buy costs money and that decreases the income for, for the farmer. Then lastly, death of an animal means obviously the loss of money because you have less animals now that you can potentially sell. And that is it for this lesson.